Corny has turned down the chance to manage West Brom, saying he'd rather stay at his current club for the time being. West Brom were very interested in acquiring the service of Equality and went so far as to meet with his wife and family, but Equality turned down their offer. When did I get a wife and a family? What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Saving Bray. This is the 8th episode of this series and today I have 3 games for you against Newcastle United, Swansea City and Everton as we aim to stay clear of the drop zone. In the last episode we had back to back wins for the first time ever with our side so today we're looking to keep the undefeated streak alive for as long as possible. We know it won't be easy but confidence is sky high right now and maybe this is the start of a really good run for Bray Wanderers. At least that's what I'm hopeful of. We've only had 3 wins all season so maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself right now. Either way, enjoy Enjoy the episode, it should be a good one. Shelby's free kick is long, Kenna loses out in the air, and the first chance coming to the away side, but the header goes over. By Naldum, and that's a great tackle by Brennan, and now Chumacero inside towards Lookman, and Lookman towards Moore, with the first time fake shot, Moore's inside the area, Moore, oh what a chance. Shelby's free kick is long, and the header comes in from Slomani, and it's off target, and Newcastle had quite a few chances like that one, long balls into the area, and headers, but they haven't really caused Drea too much of a sweat yet, and it's still goalless. Great tackle. There and a chance on the break here as Moore gets onto it and gives it inside towards Lookman and Lookman through to Ricketts. Oh, Williamson. Come on. I mean, it's Ricketts. He'll probably blast the ball into Rose Ed. Seriously. Do the stands even go up to Rose Ed here at Carlisle Grounds? Not too sure. Shelby. Oh, it's 1 0. Yeah, there was me talking about a chance there for us and John Joe Shelby gets played the ball. And makes it 1-0 to Newcastle. Great. It was a really nice goal in fairness. A really nice build-up. Slomani inside to John Joe Shelby. And the former Swansea man took his chance well. 1-0 to the away side on the stroke of half-time. And uh, our consecutive clean sheet run is over after two games. And we'll never know whether the stands at Carlisle Grounds go up to Rose Ed or not. Because Newcastle didn't put the ball over. But into the back of the net. 1-0 at the break. And that's not good. To be fair, they have played better. They've looked far stronger. You know, most of their attempts have been half-hearted efforts, really. But they still have more of the ball. Way better pass accuracy, unsurprisingly. And look way more threatening. So, 1-0 at the break. They've looked at the better side. I'm not surprised. But, you know, still chance for us to go back in the game. 45 minutes to go. Let's not see the undefeated streak end after just two games. Jaria kicks it long to Ricketts here. And a chance on the break. Ricketts through to Lookman. Lookman on the ball. Lookman and Ricketts. The fastest counter-attack in the land. Still Lookman on the ball. He's got Ricketts inside. Can he play it to him? Yes, he can. Hold it up. Still keep holding that ball. Inside if you can. Towards Lookman. Surely. Oh, he's put it wide. What a chance. Yeah, There's going to be chances to get back on level terms, but those are the ones we got to take. Come on. It's Hydara for Newcastle. Receives the ball from the free kick. Now Andros Townsend on the ball. Plays it inside. It's Jamal Escales. Oh, it's a great finish on the turn. And 21 minutes after the restart, Newcastle double their lead. Make it 2-0. And surely now they won't be caught. It was a short free kick. We ran out and everyone just left the centre back. Jamal Escales. It's, it's a great finish. There's no chance for Esteban Drea, but 2-0 to the away side, and sadly for us, two games with a win, two games with a clean sheet. That streak for both of those has now gone, and um, yeah, we're back to losing ways, sadly. A shame, too, because I really felt as though we could have won this game as well. But uh, sadly, we haven't taken our chances, and Newcastle have taken theirs. But here's more. Through the gap to Brennan. Inside the area. Brennan, surely. Oh, it's straight to the goalkeeper. Come on. And there it is then. Final score. 2-0 to Newcastle. And sadly for us, we have back-to-back -back wins and back-to-back -back clean sheets. But in this game, we got neither. We're beaten by two goals to nil. They played better. They deserved the win. And sadly for us, we return to losing ways. You can see with the stats though, they were far better and deserved the win as well. A really good performance and uh, it's sad not to have three undefeated games in a row, but that's just how it is. And man, the match unsurprisingly goes to Shelby. Only misplaced one pass out of 21 attempts in total and also scored the first goal of the game. Controlled the midfield, played really well and was instrumental in seeing his side get the three points. And after that loss, we're already back in the relegation zone, so... Yeah, that was quick. A couple wins on the trot and then one defeat and the season just capitulates. Just like that. We're going to go back on our losing streak now. I can just see it. Still a long way to go. So got to try and remain positive. Got to try and remain optimistic. Long way to go. Anything can happen. And now let's go into the second game of today's episode. Away in Wales taking on Swansea. And if we win this game as well, we will leapfrog the Welsh side and go out of the relegation zone. So, you know, if we win this game and do return to winning ways in this one, you know, the incentive of getting back out of the relegation zone again 
it is a really big one for us. So hopefully we'll come good in this game. And I'll take a draw, to be honest. Just the last thing I want to do is go on a losing streak. So I'll take a draw in this game. But if we can get a win and go back to winning ways, that's just one game without one, I'd absolutely love it. But again, wouldn't mind a draw whatsoever. So, you know, a win would be marvellous. But just making sure we don't lose this game is the most important thing. And this is Swansea's team. It's pretty decent. But Ashley Williams is on the bench. So is IU and Gomis as well. Montero too. It's still a really strong side though. And of course, Sigerson could bang him in from range. So we'll have to be wary of that. And this is going to be a hard team to beat. And of course, our team, no changes. The 4-4-2, sticking with it despite the defeat. I think we should be able to get a point in this game. And hopefully, we won't have two defeats on the trot. Cork to Kyle Bartley. And Bartley through to Jack Cork. And the former Southampton man finds Grimes inside of Gilby Sigerson. Helps it onto Adair. Adair's got Lucas in support. Oh, he's off the bar. Can we get it clear for Gazzy? No, we can't. Because the rebound's turned in. And I don't know who scored it. But Swansea take the lead. 11 minutes in. Worst possible start. I thought it was Marvin Emnes that might have got the goal. But it was Adair instead. Nice little hold up to Lucas there. He smashes the ball onto the bar. But Hagazi, who is six foot five, is out jumped by Adair. And unfortunately, he's already scored seven goals this season. Wow. Swansea have the opening goal of the game. Not a great start. Right, corner to us, more to take it. Going to triple tap the cross here and give it to man on the edge of the area. It's Brennan who sets himself and tries to beat his man and get inside to shoot. It's a good save by Nortfeld and Kingsley gets it away. That's our first real chance of the game, but a good stop by the keeper and it's still 1-0 to the Swans. Kingsley for Swansea, one final chance for the break here. Cross the boys in the centre. Oh, Esteban Drea. Oh, Esteban Drea, you've got to get to that. I'm not even surprised. Just before the break, Swansea double the lead. Make it 2-0, and Esteban Drew is back to his usual self. You know, he's had a few games without making any real errors, but, um, yeah, that's not good, is it? He just floored Higazi. He literally just punched Higazi in the face, took him down, hit the deck himself, almost knocked himself out, and it was a simple header in the centre. So, Swansea double the lead, Lucas with the goal, Esteban Drew back to his usual self. Everything's good. I was told this myself a lot as a goalkeeper. If you come for a cross, you simply have to get there because otherwise you get caught in no man's land and you're leaving your goal unguarded. And Drew, instead of punching the ball, punches a gazzy in the face and gives Lucas an easy header. Damn. You can see the reaction of Kenner in the background like, oh, for goodness sake, what's he done now? <laughs> Going into the break, things weren't looking disastrous at all. You know, we were certainly in this game despite training by a goal to nil. And then for Lucas to go ahead and double the lead on the stroke of half time through that howler from Drea, it's just, oh, it's just completely killed my confidence. And, you know, we've got 45 minutes to go, but I can't see us getting back into the game. Gazzy plays it long towards Marks, down left-hand side. Inside is Creevy. Subs linking up here. Creevy to Ricketts, holds it up. Now back to Marks. Good football here. Marks on the ball, cuts inside, gives it to Ricketts, just inside the area. Oh, he's put it just wide of the post. Almost his first goal of the season, but just off target. Connolly through to McDonough, down the right-hand side here. He'll try and drill it across to the centre. Ricketts! Oh, it's saved by the goalkeeper. He's so unlucky, he's getting chances, but just can't break the scoring duck. So final score, 2-0 to Swansea. Two games without a goal, two games where we lost by two goals, and two losses on the trot. Yep, back to that familiar feeling. We didn't actually play terribly at all. We had some good chances ourselves, but unfortunately, the problem all season long, not scoring enough goals, and that second goal killed us off, really, as the Swans get a priceless win. Man of the match to Kingsley, uh, part of the back four that kept a clean sheet and got an assist for a goal as well, so he played quite well. And sadly for us, it's another defeat. Just not sure when the next win's going to come from, really. And after back-to-back -back wins as recent as the last episode, it's sad to have to say that, but it's true. I'm just hopeful that there'll be a run of form somewhere where we go on like a four or five game streak where we don't lose any games. That'll give us a lot of confidence. But as things stand, still stuck in that relegation zone and struggling to get out of it. Bottom of the table now as well. So it's only one point behind Stoke City and Manchester United in 16th and 17th. But it's the goal difference that really worries me. Already got the worst in the league with the league's lowest scorers as well it's just it's really really concerning all right so third and final game of the episode and we take on an Everton side who are in eighth place so not exactly looking forward to this one although having said that the majority of our wins this season have actually come at home so being at Carlisle grounds does make me feel a little bit optimistic if nothing else so you never know we could possibly get back to winning ways in this game you never know gonna start McDonough ahead of Ricketts for this game as well Ricketts got unlucky in that last game against Swansea a couple of chances late on but I think potentially if he's not scoring goals it's you know it's only fair to give someone else a game and uh, maybe him coming off the bench using his pace running at tired legs that could be when he's most effective so we'll give him 
a start on the bench in this game and uh, give McDonough a start up top. Look, man, still our top scorer with just three goals as well. We really need someone to bang in the goals this season to keep us up because otherwise, if we keep on having games where we don't score, we're not going to get maximum points and we're going to struggle to get the wins, obviously, and, and keep ourselves up. So we need someone to start firing them in. So maybe McDonough could do it for us. You never know. So confirmation, just a one change. McDonough in, Ricketts to the bench. Maybe that'll do the job. You never know. And Everton's side looks like this. Interesting choice of goalkeeper. No Tim Howard or Joel. It's Stanek in goal for them. Uh, pretty decent side, though. And also Lukaku, the danger man up top. So it, it's a good squad, but um, you never know. Maybe this is the game where we finally start to score some goals. Gazzi through to Tumacero. Launches it long towards Moore. Heads it back towards Chilwell. And we'll try and get ourselves an attack here. Started with Chilwell finding Tumacero. Through the gap towards Cotal. Down the right-hand side. Cotal has Conley in support with the fake shot. Takes it around Leighton Baines. Down the right-hand side. Still Conley. Tries to take it around his man as well. Still Conley on the ball. Still Conley on the ball. Still Conley on the ball. What a run by Conley. And Funes Mori says enough of that. I'm taking the ball back for my team. And now they start an attack as well. Lukaku on the ball. Down the right-hand side. Finds Aaron Lennon. Who's got the pace on Kenner. Who's struggling to keep up. Got a position here. Gazi in the area. Did really well there. And then Higazi gives it away and cleverly finds PNR who shoots. Oh, Esther Bantria. Come on. You must be having a laugh. I have no words for this. I have absolutely no words for this. I positioned Higazi in the box perfectly. Won the ball back. His own teammate. Just seems to... Oh, it takes a deflection, actually. I was about to go on about how Drew didn't say that, but PNR's volley does take a deflection off Cotal. So, I mean, he should still be saving it, let's be honest here, but it does take a bit of a deflection. Slices off the backside of Cotal. But let's be honest here, Estevandria should still be getting a glove on that. Oh, my word. I'm telling you guys right now, if you've ever wanted to have, like, a version of me in your career mode then just sign Esteban Drea because it's basically the same thing. He plays just like how I would. Amazing. I love the reaction of the fans behind the goal. Like, just, just look at them slump to their seats like, oh, God, he's done it again. It does take a deflection. Like, it, it does take a deflection off Cotal, but I'm sorry, how on earth is he not saving that? It's just like watching me in a video game. You know, it really is. It, it's just me all over. Minus the crying hysterically for 10 minutes once I've made a mistake. Cotal down the right-hand side. We've got to hit back instantly, I feel, as he plays it through towards McDonough here. Down the left-hand side, trying to play it through towards Lookman. This is a chance. Look, man, gets himself past Funes Mori. Look, man, oh, what a touch! What a touch and what a goal! And we are back on level terms. Just a couple minutes after conceding. What a goal by Look, man! McDonough feeds him the ball down the left hand side. And this was the touch of dreams to split the defense. And with the weaker right foot, puts it past the goalkeeper. What a touch, what a finish, what a goal. Thank God I signed this guy. It's four for the season. Look, man, puts us back on level terms. It is one. 1-1 here at Carlisle Ground. Let's just go again, seriously. Don't worry about it, Drew. It's okay. Look, man's bailed us out and bailed you out once again. We're back on level terms. Come on, Bray Wanderers. And at halftime, we are indeed level. Bray Wanderers won, Everton won. Frustrated about how their goal came about. Well, we've played really well in the first half. Had more possession. We've had a really high pass accuracy, which is quite surprising for Bray. And, of course, more shots and more on target, too. If we can take a chance in the second half, I think we'll get the win. Because Everton aren't looking too menacing at all, as we're level after 45 minutes. Come on, Bray Wanderers. Best hitch takes it around to Macero. Inside to McCarthy. Goes for goal. Fires it just over the bar. Oh, that's going to fall to Lukaku, isn't it? Lukaku goes for goal. Oh, what a save. Esteban Drea. Well done. Delafeu back towards Besic here. And Besic to Bosnian. Finds Delafeu. Back to Besic. Back to the Spaniard. Delafeu. He'll try and cross the wind to the centre. Oh, no. He's running at me instead. Delafeu picks out a free man. Funes More. Who puts it over the bar. Thank goodness. Conley to Tumacero. One chance to win the game on a break, possibly. Creevy now. Oh, no, 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 Cleverly on the ball. Plays it inside. Baines is there. Leighton Baines wins it in stoppage time. I do not believe it. Oh, we were seconds away. We were seconds away. I gave it away with Tumacero. Couldn't get to the ball. It's a great ball inside. But why everyone left Leighton Baines, I do not know. And the Everton skipper, the left back, the experienced Englishman, rifles it past Esteban Drea. It's 2-1 to Everton. We're going to have three defeats in a row. This is just heartbreak. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. For the first goal, I can blame the goalkeeper, Esteban Bandria, but I gave that ball away so stupidly. I just thought I'll play it inside, possibly start a counter-attack. We shouldn't be looking for a counter-attack. We should be looking to run down the clock instead. And because of going for a winner, we've conceded a second, and Everton have won the game. 
Gutted. I'm truly gutted. I'm truly, truly gutted. We were seconds away from grabbing what could have been a priceless point, and Everton have claimed all three. Oh, I'm absolutely gutted. All I had to do was hoof that ball long and just run down the clock, but instead I thought we'd go on a counter-attack and try and get a winning goal, and instead, Everton get a winning goal. I don't know what to say. They played a little bit better than us, and the second half really came out of their shells, but... Oh, seconds away, man. I threw it away. Man of the match of the game, winner Leighton Baines. Delivers all three points for the wayside and, uh, yep, sends us even further adrift at the bottom of the table. Damn you, Leighton. I'm gutted. Like, I'm, I'm truly gutted. I'm sitting here and I'm absolutely gutted. I'm just, I'm heartbroken because we were so close to getting what could have been a priceless point. Would have lifted us off the foot of the table, but instead... We're now, well, we're still a point off safety, actually, but either way, Norwich have a game in hand, and it's just got worse for us. That familiar feeling is back. Heartbreak, devastation, absolutely gutted with what happened late on in that game. So close to a point. And after three defeats in a row, our next two games are against Chelsea and Manchester United. Good. And that is going to end today's episode of Saving Bray. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. I'm sorry there were three defeats in the three games you saw today, but either way, the challenge is getting even harder now. But if nothing else, it should make it a lot more exciting. But thanks for watching the video, though. Please do consider leaving a like if you have enjoyed today's episode. You don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Saving Bray very soon.